presenting you meditainment experience the joy of learning medicine today we'll be talking about the limitless replicative potential of cancer cells this is one among the eight hallmarks of cancer normal cells replicate 60 to 70 times and later on undergo senescence but these cancer cells are immortal so now let's find out how the cancer cells manage to have that eternal youth all cancer cells are immortal. They escape cell death via three mechanisms. Evasion of senescence, evasion of mitotic crisis and the capacity for self-renewal. As we already know, the cell cycle has two main checkpoints, the G1S checkpoint and the G2M checkpoint. The G1S checkpoint monitors the integrity of the DNA replication, whereas the G2M checkpoint it ensures that there has been accurate genetic replication before the cell actually divides. So, when the cells with these DNA irregularities are detected, the checkpoints they get activated and delays the cell cycle progression. This in turn triggers DNA repair mechanisms. If the genetic derangement is too severe to be repaired, the cell will undergo apoptosis. When cells become old, DNA damage occurs. In response to the accumulation of DNA damage, there is upregulation of tumor suppressors such as P53. These tumor suppressors they maintain the RB protein in a hypophosphorylated state. When RB protein is maintained in, maintained in a hypophosphorylated state, there is activation of the G1S checkpoint, which gradually favors cell cycle arrest. But in cancers, the RB dependent G1S cell cycle checkpoint is disrupted, and hence the cell escapes senescence. Some cells are resistant to senescence with an increased replicative capacity. But these cells are not immortal. They enter into a phase called mitotic crisis and die. Mitotic crisis is nothing but the progressive shortening of the telomeres. So who are these telomeres? Telomeres are special DNA sequences at the ends of the chromosomes. Several types of protective protein complexes are present in these telomeres. Telomerase is the enzyme which maintains the telomeres. Most of the somatic cells do not express the telomerase enzyme. So with each cell division, the telomeres shortens and when telomeric DNA is eroded, the exposed chromosome ends or sensed as double standard DNA breaks. Since the exposed chromosome ends or sensed as double standard DNA breaks, the tumor suppressor P53 gets activated and the cell arrests growth and apoptosis occurs. But what if P53 was dysfunctional. When P53 is dysfunctional, the cell emerges through the non-homologous end joining pathway. So here, the naked end of the two chromosomes join and they form dicentric chromosomes. These dicentric chromosomes are pulled apart at anaphase and mitotic, mitotic catastrophe and cell death occurs. If telomerase is present, the cell survives and there is an increased risk of malignant transformation. For example, the tissue stem cells and the germ cells they express telomerase enzyme. Hence, there is an increased risk of malignant transformation in these cells. These cancer cells express telomerase enzyme. Hence, they escape senescence and mitotic crisis. These cancer cells also have a property of self-renewal. In simple terms, self-renewal means that each time a stem cell divides, at least one of the two daughter cells remains a stem cell. This division can take place via two manners, symmetric and asymmetric. In a symmetric division, both the daughter cells remain stem cells. Such divisions, divisions may occur during embryogenesis. Whereas in asymmetric division, only one daughter cell remains a stem cell and the other one loses stemness and gains one or more functions in the process. As for now, we know the two types of division, the symmetric and the asymmetric division. Now, a question pops in our mind. Do these cancer stem cell arise from a tissue stem cell or a conventional somatic cell? So what is a tissue stem cell and a conventional somatic cell? Just like a student developing, developing
tapping into different professionals with a particular function, these tissue stem cells can generate different cell types for a specific tissue. For example, a hematopoietic stem cell can give rise to different blood cells like RBC, WBC and platelets. Here, the hematopoietic stem cell is a tissue stem cell and the different types of blood cells or cells are the conventional somatic cell. Coming back to the question, the cancer stem cells can arise from both the tissue stem cells and the conventional somatic cell cell. Here we have a chart representing the formation of the WBCs. So now, when mutation occurs at the hematopoietic stem cell, it leads to chronic myeloid leukemia. Whereas, when mutation occurs in the myeloblast, it leads to acute myeloid leukemia. So we have two types of leukemia, chronic myelogenous leukemia and the acute myelogenous leukemia. This chronic myelogenous leukemia, it originates from a transformed hematopoietic stem cell with intrinsic stemness. Whereas in acute myelogenous leukemia, it arises from the proliferating cells that acquire a mutation that confer confers stemness. So here in chronic myelogenous leukemia, it arises from a tissue stem cell, whereas in acute form, it arises from a conventional somatic cell. In both cases, cancer stem cells undergo asymmetric cell divisions and give rise to committed progenitor that proliferates more, rapid, more rapidly than the cancer stem cell. Cancer cells inactivate senescent signals and reactivate telomerase, thereby escaping senescent and mitotic crisis. In addition to this, they also have the capacity of self-renewal. So this is how the cancer cells manage to have that eternal youth.